Episode 4 Nigel, Herbert and the Cows The London and North Eastern Railway was one of the so-called Big Four companies, formed during the 1923 Grouping Act in Britain. In this form, with engines from the North Eastern region and Great Northern Railways, it lasted a mere 25 years, but left an everlasting impression of luxury, prestige and speed. Forty years after the end of British mainline steam, these are the stories they tell. The most famous engineer of the London and North Eastern Railway was a man better known to the world's press as Sir Nigel Gresley, but to the men of the line, his name is actually Herbert Nigel Gresley, Chief Mechanical Engineer. He designed the original A1 Pacifics, now classed A3, and had perfected his Pacific design with the graceful yet striking A4 Pacifics, of which Sir Ralph was a proud member. He had also designed Herbert's class, the V2s, and lots of other mixed traffic, freight and shunting engines, one class of which was the V3 tank engine. Probably one of the most powerful 262Ts ever made, these fine engines lasted until around 1959, and sadly none were preserved. Sir Ralph was still at the works, and Hawke was needed back home. It seemed the engines of the yard would just have to work harder until Sir Ralph was fixed until I was told of a lone V3 tank engine that had been dumped out of use at New England Shed. I immediately telephoned New England Yard and inquired as to its condition. When I discovered that it simply needed a crew, new paint and some coal, I moved quickly to add the engine to the yard. The engine's name was Nigel, and he arrived the week after Hawke had departed, cleaned, oiled, fired and ready to work. Nigel seemed a quiet engine and worked hard, but I suspected that it was all too easy for the powerful tank engine. The other engines were glad of the help, but Alan and Herbert had found it difficult to get anything out of him. He doesn't seem to want to talk to us, Alan said, puzzled, to Stephen one day. I don't understand it. I only said good morning and he puffed away without a word. Herbert agreed. I c c c c c c can't understand why he ignored me. I only said hello, he said, obviously hurt. Stephen raised one eyebrow. He's probably shy, he said, smiling. This is, after all, a new yard with many strange sights and engines. Speak for yourself, muttered Alan. And, of course, he'll find it hard to talk. Stephen puffed out of his siding with the intention of finding Nigel to talk to. But it seemed, no matter where he went about the yard, Nigel had moved further away. In the end, Stephen gave up and returned to the siding to have a rest. He was feeling rather glum when Nigel backed onto the next siding. Hello, the tank engine said cheerfully. I'm Nigel. Nice yard you have here, isn't it? Stephen was speechless. How come you kept moving away from me? he asked, more amused than upset. Nigel laughed. Oh, I wasn't doing it on purpose. I just wanted to finish my work first. Stephen laughed. And have you, he said, looking around the yard. He had to do a double take, as the yard was completely ordered. Trucks were in their right place, coaches were organised into their rakes, and even the special vans train was ready. A silly question, Stephen said, and smiled. Well, you certainly worked very hard today. I feel I should warn you, he added. You may have inadvertently upset Alan and Herbert. Nigel looked surprised. Who? he asked. Stephen was puzzled. Why, um, the A1 and V2, of course, he said. Nigel shrugged. Sometimes I just don't notice anyone else when I'm concentrating on my work, he said. Stephen was sympathetic. Yes, sometimes concentrating on your work is the best thing to do, he said. And you've probably worked at a bigger yard too, I presume. Oh yes, Peterborough, New England Shed, Nigel replied. Well, there you go then. You probably didn't have the time to really make friends, Stephen said, and Nigel agreed. It wasn't that I didn't want any. I didn't have time for any and neither did the other engines, he said with a wry smile. It must be nice to have a small yard, where everybody knows your name and number. Stephen agreed wholeheartedly. That evening, Alan was away, staying overnight at another yard to take the midday express the next day. Herbert found himself alone with Nigel and Stephen, and was surprised to hear Nigel talking to Stephen. Herbert was rather upset. He had tried to be polite earlier, but Nigel had seemingly ignored him. Herbert decided to pretend to be asleep and listen in on the conversation further, 
but that plan failed badly when he actually fell asleep. Stephen glanced over at the V2 and was surprised to see him asleep so early. Don't worry, he said to Nigel, who was rather bemused. I'm sure you'll be able to say hello to him tomorrow. Nigel continued to smile, with the air of one who knew more than he was letting on.